Good morning and happy Sunday. Uh, today is Sunday's Social Security Roundup put out by us, all things Social Security. Okay, so as you know, we're doing the summary of all the videos that came out this past week up through Saturday. So of course, last Sunday, we did last Sunday's Roundup of the tips and videos before that. Um, so that came out Sunday. That would be February 25th. On the 26th, Monday, um, it was a little tip about those who um, prevail in a social security disability claim and also have workers comp interplay with that. Because whenever there's workers comp, um, even if it's kind of in the past, it could definitely um, impact your social security disability benefits. So this was a cautionary tale about um, when you see an offset, make sure you know that they are counting it properly. Um, in this particular instance, if you know that one for a gap of time, workers' comp stopped paying and then it resumed again, but you've never gotten those missing payments back. Those months of those missing payments would be ones that should not be offset in hindsight uh, after you win your social security disability. So de definitely something to pay attention to and make sure they've got it right because SSA tends to do a blanket presumption that all months the person received workers' comp for the same months that they received uh, social security disability. And if they have no reason to think to the contrary, they will also sometimes presume that you are still getting those workers' comp payments, even if you are not, and you need to be able to make it clear to them when you are not. So take a look-see there on ways to do that. On the, um, That would be Tuesday, the 27th of February, which is my hubby's birthday. Um, we introduced the form SSA 521, which is what we use when you want to withdraw your application for benefits. And there are a variety of reasons why one might want to do that. Um, also on the, nope, that wasn't the 27th. The 28th, um, we talked about how to know if any of your social security benefits you receive will be taxed by the federal government um, under the income tax rules. And it has to do with the term combined income. So you're going to want to know, um, presumably, how to figure that out for yourself. To what degree, if any, your Social Security benefits will be taxed as um, via the income tax by the federal government. On the 29th, uh, we went over just some practice tips on how to list your doctors and medical providers on your application, which by the way, would also apply to when you're appealing for reconsideration or for an ALJ hearing. Um, you know, do you have to list every single person's name? They have to be all separated out. When can they be combined under one entity and all that? Um, I'm skimming through some stuff that actually isn't publicly listed yet <laughs> uh, because they're all going to go together and they're going to just come out later because it would just be too much. On March 1st, that was Friday, we did our typical Friday fraud law review. And this one concerned a 65-year-old woman from Pennsylvania um, who engaged in at least six years of fraud, nearly six figures of fraud. Um, well, I should say she's been accused of this and indicted, but was not yet convicted. Um, and really, it was more of a question of, so should her age affect her sentence? What do you think? Um, all of those, as you know, generally come from the Office of Inspector General, uh, who publishes various social security fraud related cases. Often they are the convictions. Um, sometimes it's the sentencing reporting and sometimes it's just the indictment reporting. Uh, and it could be from anywhere in the country. And sometimes like in the last few weeks, we've had um, foreign born people in the United States committing fraud on the United States. Okay, that was Friday and then Saturday, um, we went over a particular past occupation that I think there's quite a few of you out there that do this. It's a pr being a product reviewer for an online internet retailer, major retailer. Um, they have these programs where you can review their product and write a one or two liner. Um, and as a result, you don't get paid, but you get to keep the product. Um, and how that has turned out to be considered income and self-employment. 
uh, when it comes to evaluating whether it's past relevant work for social security disability determination purposes. So we go over this particular one because it came up in my practice this week and um, yeah, it was interesting. So just kind of gave you a heads up on that. All right, so that was it. That was, when did we say the 20, ah, the 25th, which was Sunday until March 2nd, which was Saturday. I hope you, uh, if you need any of those, just go check them out. They should be listed under the days mentioned. I'll talk to you later. Have a great week, guys. Bye. So you just listened to the week's roundup of all seven days right behind us and what those video tips were. Are you concerned if you didn't necessarily catch the ones from the week prior to that? Don't worry, we're gonna attach it right here. Have a great week, guys. Bye. Good morning, happy Sunday. Okay, we're here for the um, All Things Social Security Sunday's Social Security Roundup. And this would be a brief little one-liner uh, or two about the videos shares that were put out last week. Last Sunday, we had it for the prior week and so on. So if you're not the type to just, you know, listen every day, um, not everything applies and you can get a little synopsis to know if you missed a video that might be, um, you know, something you need. Okay. So last Sunday, of course, we did the same and we didn't have any other video out last Sunday. I just, I, I was just a little behind. <laughs> uh, it's been really busy. Okay, so Monday, February 19th, we had, um, this was actually pulled by YouTube from a different platform. So these things always come as a surprise to me when it happens. I don't see it when it happens. I just see it maybe, I don't know, a few hours later. Um, and this had to do with past relevant work. It was a three-parter. This is part B, and it has to do with the duration rule. Um, so when trying to determine what of your prior work is past relevant work, and the reason why that's important is because it's gonna, it's gonna let you know which jobs you have to prove that you can no longer, which of your prior jobs you have to prove that you can no longer perform, either as you performed it or as it is generally performed um, in the economy. Uh, it's, uh, it's not the only thing you have to prove in terms of what you can't do, but you have to get to that step number four before you're ever gonna move to step number five. So if you don't get through that step, so so bottom line is you want as few past relevant jobs as possible in your past because um, then you have less to prove, generally speaking. Okay, so that was Monday, Tuesday the 20th. This was, uh, when it comes to filing, when is too long, when is too long to wait um, what would be considered too long of a wait before you finally file your application? Um, there, you know, we've talked before about when you file a little prematurely, when it's not a best strategy for your case, sometimes a strategic delay is worth its weight in gold. Um, but other times delaying too long can be bad. Um, so that was the 20th. On the 21st, um, this was about the... 3315 rule when it comes to earning your social security credits and filing your tax returns within a deadline um, in order to get credit, social security credits for that tax return. It is not an open book. There is a statute of limitations of sorts beyond which the social security will not count your tax return whether you file it or not. February 22nd. Uh, this was about... Um, when you have an award and the SSA decides that you are disabled, but not at the time that you said you were, but much, much later in time, thereby depriving you of notable back benefits to the savings of the SSA, but at the cost of you, um, when, uh, when one can consider appealing that, what are the risks? Um, and what are the pros? We kind of know what the pros are. What are the risks? Okay, that was the 22nd, 23rd, Friday Fraud Law Review. This was about a Dominican Republic citizen. This was huge. It was like a $16 million um, fraud against COVID relief funds 
um, designed to help people who were unable to work due to COVID, COVID shutdowns, lockdowns, all that time. Um, and as you probably have heard in the news, ad nauseum, plenty of fraud. Whenever there is money, there's going to be fraud. Um, and this time it was a non-citizen who decided to take advantage of the USA. Um, then the 24th, we had, so that would be Saturday. Um, yeah, just go into a little, you know, someone was confused about what the different players were and what different words meant in terms of uh, who's deciding your case. So we go through who's deciding your case at each stage and what their label is, what they're called. It's kind of a, gl a glossary thing. Um, anyway, that was it for the week, guys. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Sunday and I will see you next week. Bye.